the atrium, you can enjoy a cup of coffee, uh, enjoy a treat, and maybe meet somebody new or reconnect with someone. Also out there, there's a backdrop for your Easter pictures. And so you can uh, take a family picture or a friend picture. There are even some props that you can use that will uh, really uh, add to that. I think, yes, we have an example to show you. You might not look that cute as the one on the screen, but you can try. One of uh, the missions that we are passionate about here at the light, in the life of our church and one of the ways that we seek to share Christ's love with others is through ministry with those who are impacted by our foster care community. There are currently over 2,000 children and youth just here in Cuyahoga County that have been impacted by the foster care system. And so we believe that God is calling us to do our part and to show God's love to as many of those children and youth as we can. We do that under an umbrella we call Fostering the Future that includes multiple missions and camps and mentorships. And we have a big auction coming up this Saturday at the Strongsville Rec Center uh, that raises money so that we can do all of these uh, missions with uh, kids and youth in foster care cost-free. And so I want to invite you to come, bring a friend. Uh, you can pick up tickets today here in the atrium after worship. It's a great night, full of fun, and can support a good cause together. If you're encouraged to do even more, one of those ministries, the one that uh, started it all, we say, is Royal Family Kids Camp. It's a week-long camp for 7- to 12-year-olds in foster care. We take them off on a bus, send them to go to, with them to camp for a week, have loads of fun, talk about Jesus, and form relationships with these kids. If that sounds some, like something you might be interested in, or if you have a friend that you think uh, would be great at them, come bring your friend uh, to an informational meeting next Sunday uh, here at the church, 6.30 p.m. There are opportunities to serve uh, week-long for a day here at church for check-in, and you can hear about all of those next Sunday evening. I want to encourage you to attend. You may have heard uh, that there's an eclipse coming, uh, if you do anything, and we think our parking lot will be a great spot to view it, or as great of any spot as it will be in Cleveland in April. Uh, it might be cloudy, but we'll be here having fun from 1.45 to 4.15, the day of the eclipse. Feel free, bring your car up, bring a lawn chair, uh, bring your glasses, and we can view the eclipse together. Finally, I want to let you know about a sermon series. We're going to start April 14th here after Easter. It's called The Rule of Christ, and it's about uh, how we are in relationship with one another. We all know we have challenging relationships in our family or among friends, coworkers, or even here at church, and sometimes we're at a loss about how we live into those hard relationships that might be full of conflict or disagreement. And so we want to talk about a Christ-centered way for us to do that, and we will begin that April 14th. I want to encourage you uh, to come out for that. Now, as we worship together this morning, we do so as we proclaim the good news of the resurrection of Christ together. Thank you. 
invite you to stand as you're able as we join in our call to worship. Against all the forces of evil, injustice, and oppression in this world, we proclaim Christ is risen. To despairing hearts, weary souls, and all who grieve, we announce with a smile Christ is risen. As joy wells up, Hope springs eternal, and love overflows. We celebrate. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. You may be seated, and after, at the conclusion of our choir anthem, you'll be invited to rise and join and sing together. Thank you. 
invite you to join with me in a unison prayer. Almighty God, there is no stone that can hold you back, no heavy rock rolled by grieving hands, nor sauce made by stony hearts. Wrap our sins into the folded grave clothes. Call our names so that we recognize you at work in our lives. May our songs of joy on earth today join with all the saints and angels in saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your great love for us. Hallelujah. In the name of the risen Christ. be seated.
As we move into a time of prayer this morning, I invite you to keep in prayer those listed in your bulletin in our circle of concern. We also keep in prayer those in our church family who are approaching this Easter day of resurrection in a time of grief and sadness over losses in their own families. And so we offer our prayers and our sympathy to John and Lori Karpinski on the passing of John's father, to the family of John Haight upon his passing, and the family, family of Phyllis Haviar upon her passing. We also keep in our prayers the Gunta family as they remember the life of baby Henry this week, and especially to great-grandparents Dell and Jeanette Painting. Let's turn now to God in prayer. God of new life and new hope, we gather together this morning as people of resurrection. We praise you for the many ways we experience and participate in new life. Open our eyes and our hearts to see resurrection at work in second chances and restored relationships and hopes for the future. We pray for your resurrection power to be at work throughout our community, our country, and our world. We pray for new life in the midst of places that have been torn apart by violence or destruction or disaster. We pray for protection for all those who work to bring life and hope and peace to those places. Guide us to be Easter people who seek to share your good news and how we care for those who don't have enough, for those with no place to call home, for those whose lives are in turmoil, and for those who feel lonely and left out and forgotten. We pray for your resurrection power to be at work in the lives of those who feel as though they are defined by grief this season. We seek comfort for those who grieve and peace for those who suffer loss and abandonment. We ask for hope and strength for all those who are in need of physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. God, we admit that even as we gather to proclaim that Christ is risen, that we often fail to live as Easter people. We reject opportunities to share your good news with others. We don't offer new life to those who need it most. We live into brokenness and hurt instead of wholeness and healing. Forgive us, we pray. Draw us back into the resurrection life through Christ's unending and unconditional love and grace. And so most of all today, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. As Jesus came and lived among us, he taught us what it looks like to live a fully human life. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus welcomed us into that life. Guide us into a real life of abundance and wholeness and resurrection, now and for all eternity. And as people whose hope comes from the gift of resurrection, we offer together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
are so grateful to be a part of a generous church, a church that is willing to give out of their abundance, to give of time and resources and gifts so that all can come to know Christ's love for them. And so as our ushers come forward and you have an opportunity to give this morning, I invite you to give out of the generosity that Christ has shown to you.
us pray. O God, who erased the debt of our sin, you will not take our money in exchange for our lives. You give us the gift of salvation. In your never-ending love, you invite us to be your partners to go and tell that Christ is risen. In your infinite wisdom, you invite us to give of our treasure as a symbol of giving ourselves fully into the joy of life in your spirit. We pray that you bless us and our gifts so that next year even more people join us to proclaim this sure and certain hope of resurrection. In the name of Jesus, who gave everything for our sakes, we pray and offer ourselves. Amen. We stand to honor the gospel, but we recognize a variety of physical abilities and postures, so do as you need to. From the gospel of our Lord, according to John chapter 20. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Mary stood outside near the tomb, crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb, she saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God endures forever. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. My name is Pastor Abby. I um, began here as the senior pastor in July this past year, so if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, I hope you'll introduce yourself afterwards, um, as well as enjoy all the goodies in the cafe. Um, we have a number of kids who are with us in worship today, and I want to let all the parents know that only my own kids distract me, so don't worry about what your kids are doing. Um, and uh, we didn't plan for a children's message, but I'm going to do one anyway, since I didn't tell you to, like, we didn't tell you in advance, you're not ready to come up front, you can stay where you are, but um, I've got some questions for you. Um, if a chicken lays an egg, what does it do then? Sits on it, right? And if the mama hen sits on that egg long enough, what happens then? It hatches, 
peck, 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 there's a little beak that hatches and a baby chick emerges or a baby duckling or a baby robin, a baby whatever kind of bird it is. And it comes out and it gets to greet the world. If you put that egg back together and open it again, what would you find? It's empty, right? Nothing in it anymore. Um, if you went to the tomb on Easter morning, and uh, it's kind of like the angels cracked open an egg when they moved the stone, what, what would you find in there if you looked in the tomb? Nothing. It'd be empty, right? All right, the grave clothes were in there, but the important thing is Jesus was not in there. Uh, so we celebrate Easter with eggs. Um, a lot of people think they're yummy, and um, the, many of us think the plastic eggs are even yummier because they often have a sweet treat inside, right? So when you open your plastic egg and you take out that sweet treat, it reminds you of the sweetness of Jesus rising from the dead and God's love. So I want you to say, when you open your plastic eggs and you take out the treat and then the egg is empty, say, Christ is risen. All right? That's what that reminds us of. So thanks to um, all of our kids who are with us in worship today. I mean, everybody who's here in worship today and our kids online too, hello. Um, but we're, we're especially glad to have some little ones with us in worship. Now, if into your hands I commit my spirit, had been Jesus' last prayer, we would not be here today. Who knows if we would even know the name Jesus of Nazareth. He might be lumped in with first century rabbis or first century revolutionaries, but who knows what century we'd be calling it. We wouldn't care about the visit of the Marys and the disciples to his tomb because it wouldn't be any different than any other mourners going to a burial site trying to come to grips with the surreality of death. Into your hands I commit my spirit was the last prayer of Jesus of Nazareth on the cross. But it was not the last prayer of Jesus Christ. They took him down off the cross and they laid him down into the grave, but he didn't stay down now, did he? Oh no, he got up. So go tell everyone, Christ is risen, and that changes everything. Including the prayers of Jesus, which were our guide to Lent this season. No longer does Jesus need to pray for divine strength to endure a human life. Now he is the one giving divine strength and direction to us humans. After all, Pastor Hannah reminded us last week that prayer is first and foremost about relationship with God. By the miracle of the resurrection, we can have a relationship with God better than we can even imagine. So go tell everyone. Prayer is also the hope that God will make it better. Whatever it is, a fight with our BFF, an illness, our anxiety, the horror of war. Many prayers in the Bible, in songs, in formal speech, in the privacy of our journals or our thoughts, remind us that God did make it better in the past, which helps us trust that God will make it better in the future. This prayer as the hope and trust that God will make it better can run through every move we make, every breath we take, as we learn to pray without ceasing. Go tell my people is the expression of that kind of prayer. Because I really don't think that Jesus gave up divinity, poured every drop of his life into ministry, and then died a brutal death, just to pat us on the back and say, there, there. You'll get to play a harp in heaven when you die. I really do think that Jesus lived and died and lived so that heaven could come to earth and this earth can know heaven. So his divine guidance, which is one of the things we ask for when we pray, is go tell. Go tell that God has already raised Christ and God isn't done yet. I also don't think that Jesus died 
so that the already good could feel superior. Having been human, he knows uh, how much we track other people's sins to distract from our own, which only makes everyone sin more as we feel worse and worse. And he didn't rise from the dead to tell us how bad we are, but to tell us that forgiveness of sins can be rolled up in those grave clothes. And who would know that better than a woman who experienced relief from seven demons at the hands of Jesus? When Jesus asked Mary Magdalene to go tell that I'm going to my father and your father, he's also saying, go tell everyone, God will forgive us. It's a prayer that in his resurrection, we might finally believe what he tried to tell us in his life. If God were going to hold our sins against us, would Jesus have returned as a meek gardener? After the death he died? No, if God wanted to destroy us for our sins, why come back at all? Just obliterate us. For the evil that we perpetrate against each other, we deserve it. Jesus could have come back swinging a sword of fire and shouting, you had your chance. But no. From the cross, he prayed one more time for our forgiveness. And then he comes back as a gardener, someone who nurtures life. And he calls our names gently until we recognize him. Imagine Jesus the Beloved saying your name when he says, Mary. And then imagine him saying, go tell everyone to toss their sins into this grave. Sin dies, not love. God will forgive us. Go tell that we don't have to live in shame about the bad things we have done. We don't have to live in the pain from the bad things other people have done. Go tell that the worst word is not the last word about Jesus about us, about anyone else. The God who has the power to overcome death has the power to overcome any sin. Now nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. Go tell. God will forgive us, and God will show us a better way. It's so easy to point fingers at everyone in the story of Jesus' death. Look how unfaithful the disciples were, and Jesus even warned them. Look how power-hungry the religious leaders were. What a sham trial. Talk about a politician who just does whatever's convenient. Look how violent and uncivilized they were back then. But you know what happens when you point, because your mother told you so, when you point, three fingers point back, at you. Are we really doing any better today? The story of Jesus could have been another story of nice ideas that just don't work in real life. That's what Mary's tears were for, right? Oh, Jesus, you had the best run of anyone ever, and then you had the worst death ever, so what's even the point? Mary, the crucified one, says, Mary, go tell everyone that God will show us a better way. Blaming Jesus as the bad one didn't save Jerusalem from destruction just a few decades later. Violently and publicly executing Jesus didn't prevent others from chafing under the injustice of the Roman Empire. And deep down, cheering for evil just makes us feel insecure that we might be next. So all the things Jesus' enemies tried didn't work out for them in the long run. But the resurrection? The resurrection says that love wins for eternity. Mary, Jesus the resurrected one says, go tell everyone to put their trust in God's love no matter what is happening around them, no matter what everybody else is doing, trust God. Trust God, and God will give us the courage to live like it's all true. Every word Jesus taught is vindicated by his resurrection. Shame, like the flogging and taunting of Jesus, works because of our intense fear of disconnection. But what if we know 
that nothing can separate us from God's love. What if we know that God will still love us, even if we get ridiculed for going to church, even if we lose our job for standing on principle, or can't afford nicer things because we care for a child's special needs? What if we know that physical, earthly death is not the end of our lives? Well then, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Death loses its power as a weapon against us when we know that resurrection awaits us. And that sets us free to be gentle in forgiveness, bold in justice, and peaceful in living. If we know Jesus lives, then we know God will act. Just not always as we expect. The crucifixion looks like the defeat of God. But God doesn't fight violence with more violence. God fights the violence by exposing the evil. God doesn't fight lies with more dirty lies or rumors. God fights lies with truth and second chances. God doesn't abandon us. God shows up for us, just sometimes in ways we can't see right away. God did not respond to the execution of Jesus with bloodshed or obliteration, but with life. God will always choose love and act in loving ways. Mary, Jesus the loving one, says, go tell everyone that God will act through them in love, just like me. So the risen Christ looks like a gardener, like a traveler, like a fisherman, like ordinary people, to people who were ordinary before they knew Christ. God will act, and we will meet Christ in our everyday. You, ordinary person, go tell other ordinary people that the risen Christ is calling their names. Because Jesus Christ has not prayed a last prayer because he lives and his guidance to us is ongoing. He didn't say, go home and keep your head down. He didn't say, come back when you've made yourself better, nor go away and think about what you've done. He said, go tell that you've seen me living. Go tell, go live like love wins, because it did and it does. Trust that God will make it better. Hallelujah and amen. I invite you to rise in spirit or in body for our closing
this is your first time joining us since the expansion has opened, um, the flood of people that head that way know where the coffee and the goodies are, so follow them and make a new friend. Um, we do hope you'll stay for that part. Um, and a special Easter greeting to the folks following along online. We send you our love today and every week. And so as we prepare to go forth into a world that isn't quite sure what to think about God, go forth with the assurance that Christ is risen. Go in the sure and certain hope of resurrection and in the knowledge that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about that. And go tell. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen.